Hey, scholars, it's good to be back with you. Today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how to calculate the acceleration of a disk rolling down a ramp. Now, this is a stock problem in dynamics classes, and it's also something you see a lot in the world outside of class, so it's a practical problem. It's not very hard as long as you know what a mass moment of inertia is. Now, mass moment of inertia is just a complicated way of saying it's the rolling mass or the, the rotational mass of an object. Now, before we start crunching numbers here, it's probably good to do a little experiment or demonstration so we know what it is we're talking about. Now, I'm trying to figure out how to do this on my little whiteboard, and here's what I came up with. Got a little block here, and it's got, I wrote a number on it. That's left over from, from another video. But I got magnets on the back of it, so I'm just going to stick this right there. Next thing I need is a disc. Well, I found the lid for a, a cap, for a, a cup over here, and I drew a, a, a black X on it and outlined the, the rim, so hopefully you'll be able to see this. So low angle there, what that's, I don't know, 10 degrees, something like that. So if we do this, and we roll down the ramp, Okay, let's try that again, maybe a little lower angle. Start there. Well, there you go. So, disc rolling down a ramp, we all know what this looks like. We've seen it. Um, you'll see this a lot in material handling. You'll see it in, in all different uh, aspects of engineering. So it's a real practical problem. So, let's go ahead and run the numbers here following the recipe for solving dynamics problems. So we're going to draw a working diagram, a free body diagram, write out the equations of dynamic equilibrium, and then we're going to solve for something. No problem. So let's do this. So let's, let's take a look at what we're, we're, uh, the overall problem is here. So I've got a ramp. Now, does it always look like that? No, you know, this is the idealized ramp. Might be a ramp on a loading dock, might be a material handling slot or a, a ramp on in a factory or something. It could be a lot of things. But it boils down to this, and there's, you know, it's as close to a circle as I'm gonna get. And we're gonna roll down this ramp here, just for convenience. Let's make that 20 degrees. Now. The mass moment of inertia of a disk is something you can go look up. And the mass moment of inertia, which is always called I, now why I, I don't know, inertia probably. There's 26 letters, pick one, somebody pick this. It's one half m r squared. Okay, now, uh, m is the mass, r is the radius. Notice that the depth, the, the, you know, the depth into the board doesn't show up here. So it doesn't matter whether it's a disc. Hang on a second. Uh, there. Disc like this one I just dropped on the floor, which is really narrow here, you can see. Or if it were along like a barrel or something, it's going to act the same way. So the, the depth of this, whether it's essentially two-dimensional or it's really deep, works the same way. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, let's see. This is the working diagram, so we're given this. And what are we going to try to find? Well, let's try to find the acceleration down the ramp. Acceleration could be expressed two ways, gang. It could be the rotational acceleration, or it could be the linear acceleration. We have to pick one. Let's go for the, the uh, linear acceleration. Find A, so the acceleration of the ramp of the disc as it rolls down the ramp. And again, disc, wheel, barrel, it could be a lot of things, but it, it looks like that from the side. So this is the working diagram. That's step one of the recipe. Step two is let's draw a working diagram. So if you've got this, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this on my little board here. Actually, how about if I do it here? Look, let's let's this is the working diagram. Let's draw the free body diagram over here. I'll draw the wheel disc a little bigger. That's terrible. I can do better. Here we go. See if I can get something a little more round this time. There we go. That's slightly more round, okay? Now, for a free body diagram, the first thing you're going to need is a positive sign convention. Well, all right, let's, let's uh, set one up. Normally, you use horizontal and vertical, but unless you've got a pretty good reason. Well, we've got a pretty good reason. Let's do this. Let's make the positive sign convention this. That's x. That's y, and we have to have a positive moment. We'll pay, make the positive moment uh, counterclockwise here. Now, we've got a problem here in that m is going to show up a couple of times. Moment, I'm going to use capital M, and mass, I'm going to use little m, all right? 
Let's see, we're gonna need a weight, because gravity always goes down, so that's weight. Let's see, there's a normal force, let's put that on here. Normal force, so against the ramp. Now we're gonna assume, hang on a second here. We're gonna assume no slipping. So whatever the coefficient of friction there, it's enough that the, the, the disc isn't gonna slide. All right, now sometimes round things do slide. If you've ever been at a bowling alley, you'll see somebody throw the ball down the lane and it starts sliding before it starts turning enough to, to catch up with its motion so that the, the contact patch is not sliding across the, the alley. Well, we're not having that. We're, we're assuming the coefficient of friction here is high enough. There's no slipping. So let's see, there is a friction force. We don't know what it is, but it, there is one. So there's the friction force. We could figure it out if we wanted to. And let's see, let's break this down into WY, and that's going to be W cosine theta, and WX equals W, whoops, ah, there we go, sine theta. So far, so good. Now, these are the forces acting on it. Now, the way I'm going to solve this problem, I'm going to use a concept called inertial forces. If there's a video on this, but if I say F equals MA, and we know that's true, I, uh, Newton did that for us. These are all the external forces. Well, what's that? Well, it's MA. Is that a force? No, but it's got the MA has the units of force. And if we treat it as a force and call it inertial force, we always get the right answer. And because it's on the opposite side of the equal sign from the forces, it always has, uh, always acts opposite in the direction of acceleration. Now, in the old days, this was how dynamics was taught to engineers. It's not so common anymore. It has the advantage of making dynamics look just like statics. I can draw a free body diagram for a dynamics problem. As long as I include the inertial forces, the solution method is exactly like statics. So that's what I'm going to do here. Get that out of the way. So we need to know the direction of acceleration. Well, the direction of acceleration is down the ramp. Well, there is translational acceleration. There's also rotational acceleration. This thing is going to start rolling down the ramp, just like my little uh, cap did there a minute ago. And so the accelerations, there's going to be two of them. Those are the, the accelerations we're going to experience. So the inertial force and, by extension, the inertial moment are going to go opposite that. So I'm going to draw inertial force there, an inertial moment, oh boy, where am I going to put this? M-I, right there. Well, that's pretty busy. Let's, let's unpack this. I'm going to go ahead and erase this stuff here off my little board. Okay. So we got this. Let's just, uh, there's three equations of dynamic equilibrium we could write here. Some of the forces in the vertical direction is, is zero. Some of the forces in the horizontal direction is zero, and the sum of the moments equals zero. It turns out you can solve this problem by only writing out the sum of the moments. Now, if you write the other ones out, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, but we don't need to. I'm going to just skip to the part where we're uh, uh, calculating the sum of the moments. When you calculate moments, you have to calculate them about a point. Moments are forces times distances. Well, distance from what? You need a point about which to calculate moments. I could pick anything. Remember, physics doesn't know or care anything about your coordinate system. Physics just works. The coordinate system is just there for us. It's just there for the bookkeeping. So what am I going to pick? Well, let's pick something convenient. Uh, right there, a whole bunch of stuff goes to zero, not because the forces are zero, but because the, the moment of the distance is zero. And right there, there is a friction force. Do I care what it is? No. And the problem doesn't ask for it. I can figure it out, but I don't need to. So I'm going to pick right there. That's where I'm going to sum the moments. I don't know, let's call this point C maybe, just to make that drawing a little more busy. Let's do this. Let's sum the moments about point C, and they all have to be zero, right? So I don't have to think anymore. I just, I've got everything on here that I need. This is pretty much just process after this. I'm just going to go through the motions, and I'm just going to do what the math tells me to do. 
So let's see, let's start doing this. Um, let's see, Wx times uh, R, okay, times the distance there. Now, is that gonna give me a positive or negative moment? Let's see, that's gonna make it try to rotate counterclockwise. That's positive, so we're good there. So I took care of that one. N goes through point C, WY goes through point C, so I don't care about either one of those. But friction force goes through point C, don't care about that either. See how this is working out? All right, friction force, or I'm sorry, the inertial force times R, okay. Now, positive or negative, let's see, that's gonna give me, an, that's gonna go that way about this point, that's friction, or inertial force, is trying to make this rotate clockwise. Well, that's against my positive sign convention, so there's a minus there. Last thing, inertial moment. I gotta put that in there. Moments just act. They don't, moments don't need a distance. This is already a, a, a moment. If I tried to multiply mi times r, I'd get a moment times a distance. Well, that's not Newton meters. That'd be Newton meters squared. That's not right. So there's a hint. But the moment just exists. I don't need it. I can just write it out here. So minus m i, and that'll equal zero. Okay, so let's just unpack all these terms and write this out. We'll be able to solve for a. So unpack that. W x is w sine theta, which is just mg sine theta. So mass, gravity, r. Okay, so there's this term, and don't be afraid to check these off on you know, as you write this out to make sure you got everything, because this is pretty much just bookkeeping at this point. Minus, okay, inertial force, ma. So let's put another m there, a. Maybe even call that ax, because I want, I want to make sure we know that this is in the x direction times r minus mi. Well, I need some numbers here. I guess I didn't put those up front. What I wanted to say with the, for the disk is let's make the disk have a, a mass, sorry, a mass of 200 kilograms and a radius of 0 0.5 meters. We'll use that here in a minute, but I'm gonna see mass, mass of the disk. Let's make sure and put that in here, there, so we know what that is. Okay, so everything's good here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in terms of, this in terms of the mass moment of inertia of the disk. And I, just to remind you, is one half m r squared, okay? So one half mass of the disk times r squared. Okay, that whole thing's gotta be zero. So let's see, L times alpha, sorry, got that. I'm gonna get this out of your way here. I'm gonna clean some of this up. There we go. That's all zero. Now I've got a problem here. I've got A there and alpha there. Hmm, how am I gonna do this? Well, for a disc that's rolling, that's the contact point, and it's rolling that way, so it's, it's accelerating downwards, but it's also rotating. If that's R, that's the center of the disk, A equals R alpha. Okay, and that's just basic geometry here, basic trigonometry maybe, geometry I guess. So that means alpha equals A over R. Okay, now in business, I'm gonna replace that alpha with A over R. Go around here. All right, so far so good. Let's bring it home. This is easy now. This is this is eighth grade algebra. Let's start canceling some stuff out. Well, that r squared gets canceled there. M appears everywhere, so it doesn't matter what that is. Interesting. It doesn't matter what that is. R appears everywhere. Doesn't matter what that is either. Let's let's write out what we've got left. So I've got zero equals g sine theta 
minus ax minus one half ax. Wow, that got really simple all of a sudden, didn't it? All right, because I don't want to have to bend over here. I'm going to take this and finish it up here. So I'm going to do this in a couple of steps to make sure everybody follows along. So it looks like g sine theta equals ax plus one half ax. All I did was push these to the other side of the equal sign. Well, let's see, g sine theta equals three over two ax, and ax is going to be two thirds g sine theta. Wow. So I went to the trouble of telling you what the mass and the radius was. Didn't matter. So if you work this all out, you get 2.237 meters per second squared. So there you are, gang. All right. So we started out with a simple problem, expanded it out, wrote out the free body diagram, the equations of static equilibrium, and solved. There you go. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.